obviously you've got to think about who has access to, to, to what data. So, so who decides what individual managers um, can see, you know, both what, both what they need to see, but what will help them benefit from, from, from the insights as well? <clears throat> Such a good question and probably one of the most difficult things that, that we tackled, you know, in, in rolling out this solution to, to the business. As Ampi mentioned, you know, we need to get the data to the people leaders' hands. So when it comes to access management or permission to people data, philosophy has always been to provide people leaders with full access to people data for the employees within the reporting IRR. So typically, a line manager will have aggregate access to data for the business areas they form part of, and they will be able to see the detailed data only for the teams that they manage. For example, performance ratings, uh, employee demographics, leave and compensation information. As we roll out modules, we do consult what we call center of excellence leads for the functional areas, such as reward or learning or performance management. Uh, where we decide exactly what access rights to give on every data subject. When it comes to sensitive data elements such as individual salary data, we will then seek gratification from, for instance, the people and Tulsa Stratco team. As an example, we currently expose salary data only to senior people leaders. Um, we obviously also apply restrictions to personal data as governed by, for instance, the Property Act. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.